Hello and welcome, beautiful, vibrant souls, to this week's AstroCast. Um, this is going to be looking at the week ahead. This is going to cover the week of uh, July 4th through July 10th. Y'all, I almost said January. Whoops. <laughs> um, anyway, back on this planet now. That was, that was fun. Um, yes, yeah, July 4th through July 10th, 2022. A little piece of grass. I don't even know how this got in here. You know what? It's my cat. I bet you it's my cat. It's always my cat. Um, <laughs> for anyone who's been here for a minute, I have two dogs and a cat and the, my cat ends up causing most of the, most of the mess. But anyway, um, so yes, for those who are, you know, unfamiliar with astro casting, first of all, welcome back to all my old friends and hello and welcome to all my new friends. For those who are unfamiliar with astro casting, I'm going to give a brief rundown so we're all starting from the same page. As you see, we have this lovely circular board in front of us divided up into 12 equal segments. These represent the 12 houses of the zodiac and their natural areas of rulership. As a side note, um, this is talking about their natural areas of rulership, but the messages might play out differently for you based on your own personal astrology and just the circumstances of your life journey um, that have led you up into this point. So keep that in mind. If you are looking for a personal astrocast for, you know, a uh, week, month, six months ahead, whatever it may be, please feel free to DM me. I'm happy to make you a custom reading. Um, but what we do is we have this board and we have this jar full of teeny tiny tarot cards. Like, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Can you guys see? Hang on. Uh, we have this little, look at this little eight of pentacles. He's working so hard. Oh, um, so I reach in blindly, grab cards, cast them into the board, and then interpret the energy of the card in the area of life where it lands. So that's basically how it works. Um, I'm really sorry, by the way, that I have this unsightly like little cut on my hand. Um, I got a massive wicked bad bug bite and I just got irritated. So sorry, it's not super fun to look at. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how it works. So let us take a look at the week ahead. I hope you guys are having a good week. I don't know why I have a hard time talking while I'm uh, casting the cards because I have my eyes shut and I'm like trying to trying to tune into the right cards and talk to you guys. But just a simple message. I hope that it's good. The energy feels really light um, today, which is nice. Um, or it's like it's, it feels much more open, I guess, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so for those of you who are new, um, so you see how we have a situation like this where we have the seven of cups and the top of the card is facing in like toward the center. I would read this as reversed. We have something like this with the four of swords where it's pretty much on its side. I'm going to read that as the energy is in flux. And then um, if it were the opposite where the bottom of the card is primarily facing inward, I would read that as upright. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so we have the seven of cups reversed in the fourth house. We have... Ooh, the Ace of Swords on its side, bordering the third and fourth house. Fascinating. Um, we have, I have a burp stuck, you guys, just so you know if I, if I burp, I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, it wasn't a burp, it was a hiccup. Interesting. I have so many questions. Um, we have the Four of Swords on its side in the seventh house. Um, we have the Fool reversed in the eleventh house. And we have the Knight of Pentacles, I'm going to say reversed in the tenth house. Um, so we have, I always read the Fool as Aries energy, but some people read it as Aquarius, so especially turning up in the 11th house, which is traditionally ruled by Aquarius. Um, I want to make note of that. And with the Knight of Pentacles, this could represent a person potentially. This would be, um, you know, a masculine earth energy, whether that's their sun sign or it's prevalent in their chart or it's just their vibe. Um, so Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, and when I say masculine, I mean that in terms of energy, not like somebody's gender identity or expression. So... Pardon my sniffles, my allergies. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> um, so I'm really drawn first and foremost to this Ace of Swords bordering the third and fourth house, kind of like lightly touching the Seven of Cups, like, oh, I'm just like putting a hand on it. Um, <laughs> for several reasons, one of which is that the third house can really talk about communication. Um, so for some of you, there's something where you're waiting for communication. I also was getting with the Ace of Swords in this particular situation. There's a decision, right? Um, and because it borders the third and fourth house and we have the Seven of Cups, I do feel like these two are related. Um, so this is something where we do also have Neptune retrograde right now. And this is what I feel like is playing out here. So the fourth house is really our emotional foundations. It's our roots. It's our home, our family. It can talk about our 
um, relationship to mothering, whether this is our own mother, how we mother ourselves and others, or if we have children, and you know, how we mother our children. Um, so there's something here where I feel like Neptune retrograde has caused something to be revealed. And this is at a very intuitive, emotional level. I don't feel like this is something that was directly communicated, but this is a truth that you've kind of been coming into. For some of you, you have already realized this truth and you're kind of meditating on it. For some of you, it's kind of all coalescing and coming together in the next week where all the pieces are kind of coming together. And I really feel like this has to do, first of all, this could have to do with your home. Um, this could have to do with your family, but I'm feeling for many of you, this is about your emotional foundations. This is something where this could talk about childhood, like inner child healing that needs to take place. There's an understanding. That's the word that keeps coming through. There's an understanding and it feels very peaceful. I'm really drawn into the laurel wreath here. Um, so this could be about you know, how to move forward victoriously. This could be about a situation in the past that didn't work out, right? Um, especially because we have the laurel, the, the laurel plant here too. Um, this could be a situation where, you know, in the past it didn't work out. This could be a self-defeating pattern that's been with you since childhood, right? This can also really apply to our subconscious programming pretty heavily. Um, and there's something where you're coming to understanding. You're seeing something clearly, I feel, or you have recently seen something clearly and you're kind of just like meditating on what to do about it, um, you know, what to say, especially with the Ace of Swords on its side, um, bordering the third and fourth house. This is like communication is in flux or you're, you're either waiting for communication or you're waiting to communicate with somebody. And I feel like it's about this realization, right? Um, or it involves this realization where it's kind of like, um, you know, you could have had a realization about where you want to live um, or what you want your home life to be like. There's just this, yeah, revelation is another word I'm getting. Uh, there's this deep, intuitive, emotional understanding where you're like, um, you know how we can know things intellectually, but it's really hard for us sometimes to implement it in a moment. There's like that wisdom of the soul and it, it has to come to fruition in its own time, right? You can't really force it. You just kind of, you wake up one day and you you peacefully know it, right? Um, and, and it just kind of becomes a part of your life, a part of your decision making, a part of your your structure, right? And this, I feel like this seems on the surface kind of somber, but this actually comes from a very beautiful place. This comes from a lot of inner healing um, where you've really been doing the work. And I feel like for a lot of you, whatever this is, this has not felt very healing as you're going through it. It may have even felt like you had been regressing or like um, things were just like falling apart. Maybe like shit was hitting the fan. Um, but I feel like you're coming into this place where you're like, okay, I see, I see my patterns, I see what I need to do, I see how everything came together, like I know what needs to happen next is kind of the energy I'm picking up here. So for some of you, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, with the Ace of Swords bordering the third and fourth house, for some of you, um, I'm hearing for some of you who heard from a family member online, like maybe this is a family member you're at a distance with and you were communicating via social media where they had posted something. Um, for some of you, you're waiting for communication from somebody, um, but you already kind of know what you need to do. You might be waiting to hear about a house, um, waiting to hear about something involving your family. But there's this kind of, again, like this, this resolve where it's like, I know what I need to do. Um, and it's, again, it, like it has this feeling of being a little bit heavy, but it's this, you're, you're resolute because you know it's for the best, whatever this is, um, and that better things are beyond this turning point. Um, for some of you, you're going to be getting communication and it's going to be clearing some things up pretty considerably. Um, I'm hearing a plan, so for some of you, you're finally getting like an idea about a plan. So it's kind of like a half breakthrough where you have the idea, but you're also figuring out how to make it work. Um, you're like really looking at your options moving ahead. There's something where you're starting to see it with clarity, but it is still a little bit in flux over the next week. So you might be waiting on information. <clears throat> oh, excuse my hiccup. You might be waiting on further information, um, further communication from someone. Sorry for my sniffles, my, ugh, my allergies. 
further communication from somebody. But this is also something where it's like, even if all the details aren't worked out, you already kind of intuitively, you have a gut feeling about what you need to do, where things need to go. And so there's this understanding that like, okay, the details are gonna fall into place, but I know where I'm going now um, for many of you. Uh, my nose, you guys. <laughs> Um, now I want to talk about this Four of Swords on its side in the seventh house, and I'm actually going to pull a little bit of a clarifier about this, um, just because, just because I want to see what comes through. Ah, here we go. We have yeah, the Six of Swords. I'm not surprised. Um, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for a lot of you, you know, seventh house is the house of partnerships. Um, this can talk about partnerships of all kinds again i'm sorry for the sniffling um so this would be you know this can be romantic partnerships business partnership um just anybody you're in close connection and collaboration with um you know creative partnerships so there's something with the four of swords on its side that i feel like you've been trying to heal it's been in like this holding pattern right maybe there's something that there's a certain element of like degradation right because we have the four and the six but the five is missing and the five of swords is like harsh exchange of words, right? Um, power struggles, you know, the somebody who lashes out when they feel emotionally triggered, stuff like that. And we have the swords here. So this has been, there's been a lot of strain around communication. There's been a lot of anxiety, I feel like too, with all the swords, because we have also too, the ace of swords, we have a lot of swords here. Um, but there's been a lot of strain, a lot of anxiety, a lot of, uh, I'm hearing like holding your breath or just like, like this, like, ah, uh, kind of locked up energy here. Um, the Four of Swords with Upright usually talks about healing and meditation. This is a reflection, but this can also reflect not communicating, right? You're kind of in silence, sort of getting some clarity on something. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. So being in the seventh house, because it's on its side, this may be where, kind of similar to this message, there's been this period of reflection and there is now an understanding about um about the situation from a new perspective a new angle um, but there hasn't been communication this could be where there is this understanding that's kind of coming in but clarifying it is the six of swords now this is always about moving forward right this is about going from you know these like choppy sort of waters right here this chaos to smooth calm waters but there is an element of sadness right because you're kind of you have to cut your losses and it's with that knowledge again very similar to this message with this knowledge that it's for the best but there's a little bit of sadness still um around this situation and i always call this the inner child healing card too because we do have you know mental emotional peace and healing and rest but there's a woman and her child in the boat um so this could very well be related to this kind of healing is that you know, there's kind of this healing to your emotional foundations, this understanding, um, and that this kind of is coming out in other areas of your life this week. But there is a healing to a an element of partnership. Now, this could be somebody, for some of you, I'm almost feeling like this could be a relationship of the past. Like you're finally healing, you're finally moving forward. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> some of you may have been fighting with your partner and just not really talking, giving each other kind of like, the cold shoulder a little bit and that's sort of resolving um but there is this there, there is peace right there is a there is a move or a plan to move toward peace right so no matter what happens there's kind of there's like a sacrifice a little bit and a move forward right so like if you guys if you and your partner are arguing it's like okay you know what i'm not gonna hold on to being right about this i just want to solve the problem like i just want to stop fighting or like um you know if you've uh been struggling to see eye to eye on how to handle a situation you might kind of concede to their way of doing things or you know something like that with the idea of like you know what i want to especially because the five is missing right it's like i'm gonna i want to win the the war not the battle i'm gonna well i'm gonna pick my battles here and i'm gonna just let this go so there's like there's just this kind of like sigh out and it does feel a little heavy i'm not gonna lie um, but it's kind of an outward sort of like, okay, you know what? Like, I just, I want to move on from whatever has happened here. Um, <laughs> excuse me. For some people, I'm going to say there is, you're going to be meditating and reflecting over the next week 
on whether or not to move on from this connection, whether or not to move on from this relationship. Um, and for some of you, you've been in this place of reflection and meditation, and this week you're gonna be getting answers about whether or not to move on. Um, I kind of want to pull one more for this just because I want to I want to kind of figure out what's going on here because I'm nosy. I want to take two. Okay. Wow. Yeah. The magician and the world. Yeah. So there is a big cycle that's ending. This is why I do feel like these are connected because I feel like it's not just about partnerships. It's also about your emotional foundations. This could have to do with um, moving as well, moving houses. This could have to do with travel, going far away. Um, oops. Sorry. <laughs> This could be a situation where maybe one of you gets an offer, like a job offer, or one of you is like, I just realized, okay, <laughs> you guys help. And you know, one of you is like, I just realized like I wanna move somewhere else. And there's kind of, cause this is also a card about movement forward and travel as well. There's also kind of this energy of like, you know, there's an energy of like, I, I wanna go take this opportunity this is really important to me. It's something where it's like, I've worked really, really hard for this. Um, I've manifested this and that might kind of cause a natural sort of, a natural diverging between the two, right? Um, so for some of you, I do see that. And for some of you, with these two coming out to clarify, like I said, there's a cycle in your life that's ending, a big cycle, because you've learned a lesson from it. Um, you've like really, really learned and you've grown at the soul. And this is now changing because it changes your emotional foundations. This is now changing the way you show up in partnerships. And as a result, it's allowing you to manifest something new completely. And for some of you, just because we have the world and then we also have the fool, which I love. Um, so these go in sequential order, the world, the fool and the magician. Uh, but for some of you, I will have to, like I do have to be honest, um, you're manifesting a new, better opportunity um, with the fool here too, because you have done this work, because you've done the healing. And that does mean moving on from, especially where these are both cards of finding peace, um, moving on from something that steals your peace of mind. Um, and for some of you, you know, if you're single and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, you've been doing a lot of healing work and wrapping up old cycles. And that's what's allowing you to manifest a different type of partnership coming in. Um, like one that's much better suited to you. <clears throat> so I do like that. Excuse me for my burp, my burp, my cough. Oh my God, you guys. All right. Woo, I was gonna be like, it's gonna be a long week. And I'm like, girl, it's Friday. It's Friday when I record these. So I'm like, it's a long week. Bitch, it's Friday. Like, I don't know. Okay, I'm having a day. Um, so this is actually a great segue into this full card in reverse in the 11th house there is a new beginning on the horizon now we do have a lot of mountains here right meaning this new beginning is not going to be without challenges without obstacles um and i feel like these are the things where you know normally the fool is like i don't give a shit about your challenges i'm gonna just take a leap of faith i got my dog i got my tiny bag i got a white rose and i got faith in myself and spirit let's do this that's kind of the vibe i love the fool wonderful wonderful right um and i feel like with the fool coming up in reverse in the 11th house. There's a wish that you have. And I feel like this is the beginning of a big journey. And this might be why there's trepidation um, over the obstacles to come is because it's whatever this is, it's not like a little thing. Like this could have to do with, um, you know, like I said, moving. You could want to move really, really far away. You could want to start traveling um, more consistently or full time. Um, <coughs> excuse me you know, you might want to be taking a big leap of faith with a partner. Um, you could be thinking about opening your own business or taking things to the next level. There's something here where whatever this is, this is, I'm getting this really clearly, whatever this is, this is something you've never really truly done before. Even if you've done it, maybe you haven't put your whole heart and soul into it, or you haven't like taken a complete leap of faith There's something else. So there is still trepidation here, right? There is still fear about the obstacles to come saying, can I deal with this? Can I can I live up to this? Will I completely fall on my damn face? Or can I, can I do this, right? Um, and this is a lot of the energies here feel very like, very self-focused, not like selfish, self-focused, right? Where it's really your internal journey. So there's something here where over this next week, I feel like you're kind of, I am gonna clarify this, but I feel like you're kind of like excited about this, but you're also sort of like trying to figure out how. Okay, yeah, three of cups. Um, 
So the Three of Cups comes out, and for clarification, when I pull a card out as a clarifier just for astro casting, I don't do reversals because it just gets challenging. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is something where I feel like it'll make you really, really happy. Again, I'm kind of getting like a travel vibe, right? This could be like where you're starting to spend time with new kinds of friends. Um, this could be something where just because, you know, the Three of Cups can talk about um, like pregnancy and birth where you're deciding whether or not you want to have a child. I'm not picking that up a whole lot, but I am going to put it out there just in case it applies. Um, but there's something where, especially coming out with the 11th house, um, there's something that would require you to be kind of in the in the scene more <clears throat> excuse me be possibly more extroverted than you normally would be reach out to people more collaborate with people where normally you might prefer to work alone um there's something here where it's like there's this opportunity for not only incredible happiness but with all the greenery here a lot of growth a lot of abundance um but there is still a little bit of fear like can i do this if i take this leap is spirit gonna catch me? Um, so it's just, you know, kind of things that you're gonna be looking at the logistics of and toying with over the next week. But I do feel like this is a very, very positive, auspicious new beginning for you. Again, we had the world and the magician come out, even though it's for, you know, the seventh house. So there is this ending of a cycle and the fool only comes after the world, meaning you only get offered this new opportunity when you're ready for it, right? And you've been manifesting a lot in your life right now. Um, for some of you, this could talk about a business partnership that's emerging. After you've done a lot of healing work, you started to make peace with peace. Um, this could be talking about that, a new um, creative collaboration for sure. But there's a lot of happiness to be found here. Um, I guess I like that. There's a lot of happiness to be found here. So I feel like in this situation, Spirit's letting you know, like, there are helpful people coming your way. For some of you, you're interested in travel because you want to try to find your soul tribe, and that's really positively aspected. Um, so as you're making your plans and you're kind of thinking about these themes more over the next week, um, Spirit wants to let you know that what you feel called to, it means you're on the right track. Um, and then lastly, we have this lovely little Knight of Pentacles in reverse in the 10th house. I'm going to be honest, so the 10th house is like your legacy, right? It's your career, um, your status, your public reputation, how people know you. Um, and for some of you, you've been investing in either a career or a course of study for like a long time. You've been putting a lot into it. Um, you've really been dedicated, showing up. And for some of you, it's either not panning out or for, for some, I feel like you're doing an overhaul like on your life. <laughs> Excuse me. And the way this might show up is that there might be, you might be somebody who's very like married to their job or like very associated with your career. People know you as the, you know, the fill in the blank person. Like, oh yeah, they, they do this. Like, that's one of the first things people say about you. Like, this is my career and I'm so blessed, but like I'm the tarot girl and everybody knows, like, every, I mean, I live in a small, small-ish town. Uh, like, but like, you know, when I, when I'm out and about in town, like I'm the tarot girl and everybody knows that. <laughs> like, it's kind of like that where it's like, this is, this is your thing, not just your job, but this is part of how you're known. And I feel like for some of you, you've been investing into this path for a while. And then there's this recognition of like, you know what? I kind of don't want to do this anymore. Like I, I would like to try something else. Um, and you might be faced with this decision coming up about, do I stay the course or do I completely pull the plug and go in a different direction entirely? And I, I don't want to tell people what to do because, you know, obviously, like, I think you you are empowered and smart and wise enough to make your own decisions. But for a lot of people, I'm getting the feeling that it's like a like a switch was flipped and you're going to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. I think I want to do something else. And that's a really divinely inspired idea. And this might be why there's trepidation as well, because in the story of the Wheel of the Zodiac, you know, we go through houses one through 10. And by the time we get to 10, this is all about what we've built for ourselves through all the experiences that we've had and what we've learned and how we've grown, right? And when we go from the 10th to the 11th house, we are kind of having this recognition of like, look at everything that I have made, look at like what I've achieved. And now I want to grow more. I want to do something more. I want to expand. <clears throat> and this is why the 11th house can talk about like wishes, friends, humanitarianism, community, because it's the, the things and people we need to help us grow past our limitations, right? We've gone as far as we can go on our own um, or doing things, you know, roughly by ourselves. Um, and now we need that support and that help to expand past, like I said, our limits. 
right? So this might be something where you really, you know, been putting a lot into the situation and there's kind of this recognition of like, I don't even know if I want to do this. And for some of you, you're getting offered this opportunity to do something different where you have an idea, an epiphany where you're like toying with it. And that's here for a reason. I feel like if that's something that, you know, crosses your mind, give it serious consideration this week. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. For some of you, these are connected where you're expecting an offer from like a job um, or from another company. You're expecting an offer and you don't get it, but you get a different offer. And like this could be where, you know, maybe you're expecting to get um, a promotion from work and you don't get it. But then a friend comes in and is like, hey, you know, I'm working on this startup and I think you'd be really, really good for this position. Do you have any interest? Right. And it's kind of like this energy of like I've already invested so much in this but I don't know if I really want to do this or like, but I'm really intrigued by this. I feel called to do this. So essentially the message here is be open to things shifting and changing when it comes to your career and the people that you collaborate with, because there is a change. Um, I feel like this is all about letting go everything in this entire spread, but this is all about letting go of old energy because you really completed cycles here. Um, and you guys are manifesting big, beautiful things. Um, but things are kind of shifting this week. So there's like, it almost has this energy of like a switcheroo. <laughs> like, like it's like, oh shit, I didn't get that raise. I didn't get that promotion. I didn't get that job. And then there's almost like this alternative that's offered. And it's kind of this energy of like, what? That's not even the same thing. Or like, that's not even in the same field. Or that's not even a position that I'm trained to do. Um, but Spirit's saying kind of like, if you feel called to it, follow that. Heed that calling, right? You know, this is all about taking a leap of faith. Follow that sense of inner knowing um because things are kind of getting things are shifting in your favor but things are getting re-racked is what i'm hearing like moved around um in your favor so this is really a week to just go with the flow as much as possible um trust your inner knowing there's a lot here about getting very very clear um with your intuition like listening to your intuition and like allowing it to what i'm hearing is allowing it to wash over you and to accept the knowledge and the wisdom that your soul is trying to bring you um as you kind of look to the future and think about the plans that you want to make and the people you want to share your journey with so this is just about everything that i'm seeing for right now i hope this has been helpful i hope you have a happy healthy blessed week ahead um and i will be seeing you soon love bugs have a great day take care bye